Hi everybody, Steffi here from The Makers. I'm here to show you how to make a piggy wiggy ear. Now this is not a new tech technique or indeed a new project, but of course um, there are many ways of um, making um, needle felted ears. And this is another one that um, I personally haven't, don't usually use, but um, Colette who's designed our teacup pig for May 2023 is using this technique um, to make the ears. So I thought it might be worth just uh, sharing it out and uh, making sure that um, you uh, can follow it um, from the beginning to the end. So we're making a piggy ear here, this one, this one, and um, the instructions of course will give you a very clear um, idea if you are a subscriber to our Makers Box. This tutorial was initially created as a technical support tutorial for our subscribers and this is for the teacup pig um, which is number 72, box number 72, six years of Makers Boxes and um, it's May 2023. And what you need uh, for this, um, you need um, a good pinch of the um, pink wool that um, we call our flesh pink. It's actually the Australian Merino, which is why we're using a fine needle. And you also have a wisp of the pale pink mountain sheep. And um, you would have a template on your instruction set that um, shows you the size of the ears. So that's really useful to know as well, which is here. And I'm going to use that in a minute for um, making the little piglet ear. Now, um, in on the pictures, uh, um, how it's made, you will see on the left hand side, the ready made ear. And then on the right hand side, the, the, um, the, the second ear will be made. So I'm going to set it up exactly how it is in the instructions. But this is just so that you can see what you're actually aiming for. So you are free hand um, making an ear shape by stabbing into a consistent line into your um, wool um, pinch. And the ear is by no means the finished size because you can go bigger by um, stretching it a little bit and you can go smaller, but you're sort of making a rough shape of the ear. Now, you are making a right and a left ear, so remember that um, they, they might be slightly different in shape. And, um, and then when you've uh, needle felted this outline into it, you fold the wispy ends over into the center. So that now um, finishes the edges off nice and neat where you've had that line there and the tip of the ear you need to probably work a little bit harder because all the wool comes together there so get it down first now the main thing is because you're felting this on your mat now I'm using our earth friendly felting mat I've covered it up with a felt sheet because it doesn't look too good underneath it anymore having used it for um, a lot of projects but um, in any case whatever mat you're using you will likely find that the wool gets attached onto the mat so tease your ear off as quickly as you can turn it over and work it from both sides now this is where the shaping really starts you're felting it flat because that's what you want you want a nice a nice flat ear but you also want it to be um, shaped nicely so at the moment if I look at the ear on the template and I lay that on top it is definitely a bit longer um, so I'm going to shorten it now wherever you stab the needle is where the reduction takes place so if you go at a shallow angle um, stabbing into the side like I'm doing now then you can see that you are pushing the fibers in in that direction and that is um, helping with the shaping and shortening the ear I don't think I want to make it much um, slimmer but it would work the same way if you wanted to slim the ear down now these wispy fibers you leave unfelted they uh, they need to be uh, used later on to attach the ear and if you go in even across the ear at a slight angle it will pull the fibers together in that direction what whatever direction you stop the needle is also where the fibers get pulled in so I need to work quite a little bit still on the shape of that ear. It's still not quite right. Now I'm going to just check. I've got one ear here, which is going to be the right ear. And that's that one. So I actually now want to make a left ear. So I'm still going by that shape, but in a minute I'm going to turn it over. So it needs to be that shape, but the opposite direction, if that makes sense at all. So going... Um, that is if, if the ear has a slight different shape to the other one. If they're exactly the same, you just need to make sure when you are putting the pink on the inside and pinching it shut, that you've got the pink on the inside of the ear, not on the outside. So I'm now going 
this is going to be the ear, the opposite side. So I'm working on the shaping of that. I'm actually using um, the other ear now um, as a bit of a guide. So it works much better if you've had a second, uh, first ear there and you're making the second. Um, however, it is always hard to make the second look exactly like the first. Now, if you've got a five needle felting tool like the Clover tool, it definitely helps you get the ear stabbed down much faster. Um, especially when it gets sort of towards the end, make sure that you don't stab it right down into your felting mat, just um, quite superficially because that fastens less fibers into the mat. Again, still shape, shape the ear um, by stabbing into the sides and making it the shape you want it to be really. So it's, a, it's, it's consistent stabbing, constantly checking it against the template, making sure that the ear is taking on that shape and, um, and then once you've got a nice neat finish and a solid finish, then you're going to um, do the next step. Now I know that some people use actually an iron to flatten flat shapes from made from wool to give them less of a woolly look and make them even neater and flatter. So to do this you would um, rest the ear on, if you've got our um, earth friendly felting mat, use the woolen, the 100% woolen side, there's no danger of burning anything and then just um, iron it flat or if you've got some hair straighteners you can use them too. Obviously be careful to not burn yourself and um, you, you, as long as you don't um, leave the, the wool exposed to too much heat, too high for too long, then um, uh, the wool will be absolutely fine. It shouldn't sort of like you don't touch it and suddenly it burns. It doesn't work like that. Wool is actually a fire retardant, which is why that works really well. So now I've got my two ears. I'm going to add a tiny bit of this um, slightly different shade of pink into the middle, like a dusting. Again, use your multi-tool if you have one. It is definitely a good time to get that out and um, use it. Felt it down as well. With these, you have to come from the top. Uh, don't try to come from the side. It just breaks needles. And, um, and so then you've got your second ear here. And now this is the different technique from what I have done in the past. Uh, you are actually going to now, um, sorry, I just need to shape it a bit more, <laughs> just realized it needs a bit more here on the side. So what you're doing now is, um, and this is how Colette does it, she folds, she pinches this bit in, so you already get that curved shape. Now I usually do that once it's attached to the animal, but this is just another way of doing it. So sit it on its side, so it's curved in that way, folded in half almost, and then stab consistently into that pinch, into that folded up um, end of the ear from one side and then do it from the other side as well. So the needle goes all the way through from one side of um, the ear um, to the other side so that you get that shape of a of a folded up ear already. And um, that means that you don't have to um, do any um, adjustments once, once it's on the head. And then how they attach on the head, so they're really quite pinched here if you can see that. Um, they literally attach on the head like this. So you you um, put them on, you um, spread out these wispy fibers and you just felt it on and that fastens the ear on. Um, so that should be um, enough of the tutorial to show you how the ears are fastened on and it, it almost looks like it's got sort of a little, little bit of a headband at the back but you cover some of this over and then of course you decorate your piggy as well with um, its uh, black spots and, um, and that's really how the ears work. Hopefully um, that was a useful tutorial and um, hopefully it will help you make all of the, um, the little piggy that sits in its cup in our teacup pig makers box May 2023 which is available until the end of the month. If you're watching this any time in the future and you really want a teacup pig and we don't do it as a pack or a kit we will always have the downloadable PDFs available for you to purchase and then you just need to uh, buy the ingredients. Not very many ingredients, it's quite a, um, an easy project in terms of um, not having to have lots and lots of colours and uh, uh, different uh, wools. Right, that's it. Um, see you soon and um, I want to see all these piggy wiggies with their flappy ears. Bye!